Welcome pre-cal students to the homework help video. Page 588, numbers 9 through 43 odd. Um, please have your homework out. Have your books open to page 588. I am opening my book right now to page 588. You will probably also need your trig identity sheets for some of these equations that we're going to solve. And let's go ahead <coughs> and let's get started. Uh, page 588, 9 through 43. Here we go, the odd. Okay, let's start off with number 9. Um, as soon as I see number 9, I realize that all that I have on the left side of the equation is simply cosine x. So I could actually um, add 1 to both sides if I wanted to. So bring the negative 1 over and make it a positive 1. And that would leave me with 0.2814 negative. 2 cosine x and then divide both sides by 2. So 2 cosine, excuse me, cosine x equals, let me get out my calculator real quick here, point, uh, that would be a negative 0 0.1407. So obviously when I looked at this problem right away I saw that I just had a cosine x. All that I have to do is get that by itself. And then I can solve this pretty easily. Now if we pull up our table we're going to notice nowhere on the table do I have a negative uh, 0 0.1407 so we're going to have to use our calculators. So I'm going to type into my calculator inverse cosine or second cosine of uh, negative 0 0.1407. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and use a positive. I'm going to tell you why. I want to get the reference angle. So I would encourage you to type into your calculator inverse cosine of 0 0.1407 and you will get out 81.9 degrees or in other words 82 degrees. Alright, so I get out 82 degrees so I'm going to write that up here and now I realize that I want to get out a negative cosine of an angle that gives me out a negative. So cosine is negative here and cosine is negative here. So I'm going to put 82 degrees here and I'm going to put 82 degrees here. Now here I go all the way to the hypotenuse. So one answer is going to be 98 degrees. And then I go from here all the way to the hypotenuse here. That's going to be 180 degrees plus 80 two degrees more and I will get 262 degrees and there are your two answers okay now I'm gonna start going pretty fast through these so you're gonna have to rewind and and watch the ones again that you're struggling with okay alright number 11 I noticed that I just have a sine X so first of all I'll bring the square root of 3 over and make it a negative so I have two. I have 2 sine X equals a negative square root of 3, then divide both sides by 2, so now I have sine x equals negative square root of 3 over 2. Let's go ahead and put up our table and see if we have anything, here it is right here, notice on your table that if we have right here, if we take the sine of 60, we will get square root of 3 over 2. So the angle I'm going to deal with here is 60 degrees. put that right here and so now notice though I want to know the sine of a certain angle that gives me a negative square root of 3 over 2 so sine is negative here and sine is negative here so we'll put a 60 here we'll put a 60 here we'll start here we'll go to the hypotenuse that's 180 plus 60 more 240 degrees and then I'll use a different color we'll start here and go all the way around to the hypotenuse here we stop 60 degrees short of 360 so my other answer would be 300 degrees okay so there's the answers uh, to those two trig equations and when I kinda talk slow I'm looking to check the answer to make sure that we got it right and we did okay moving on to number 13 I noticed that I have just a cosine square so I can get that by itself pretty easily the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So now I have cosine squared x equals 1 half. Next, I want to get rid of the square, so I'm going to take the cosine of one side. But if I take the cosine of one side, I must put plus minus over here and take the cosine of the other side. The square root of cosine, or take the square root of this side, the square root of cosine squared is cosine x. 
And then over here, the square root of 1 would be 1, and the square root of 2 would still be square root of 2. So we know how to rationalize this. So what I really have now is cosine of x equals plus minus square root of 2 over 2. Now it's really important that I write it like that because I need it to match um, my table that I'm about ready to pull up here in just a second. So I'm looking for an angle so that when I take the cosine of it, I get square root of 2 over 2. Well, let's see what that would be here. Here's cosine. When I take the cosine of 45, I get square root of 2 over 2. Okay? So the angle we're dealing with is 45 degrees. Now, which quadrant do I go to? Well, I go to all four of them. Look, I want positive and negative square root of 2 over 2. So I'm going to have to use all four quadrants. So I will have four answers. Inside each triangle, I'm going to write 45 degrees. And let's go pretty quick. I'm going to go from here to here, and I stop at the hypotenuse. That's one answer, 45 degrees. Then I'm going to go from here to here. I stop at the hypotenuse. I was 45 degrees short of going all the way to 180. So 180 minus 45 would be 135 degrees. Then I'm going to go from here all the way to this hypotenuse. So I went 180 degrees plus 45 more. That's 225 degrees. And then I'm going to go from here all the way to this hypotenuse. I stopped 45 degrees short of going all the way to 360 degrees. So that's going to be 315 degrees. So there's my four answers. Now, I very quickly do want to pause and check them in the book. Let me check and make sure we did this correctly. Um, I don't think they have 13 in here. No, they don't. It's in the back of the book. So we'll go ahead and leave it like that. It looks pretty good. All right, let's go on to number 15. number 15. All right, now, right away you should notice that we have a sine squared and a sine. Now, that's like looking at a quadratic equation and seeing 2x squared plus x equals 1. I mean, you should know pretty much we're going to have to factor or use the quadratic equation, one of the two. So, um, I have 2 sine squared x plus sine x minus 1 equals 0. <coughs> okay, now I am going to try to factor this. For me, I like to take the trig function out, so I'm going to write 2x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. Now, notice this is one of my uh, quadratics where I have a lead coefficient of 2, so I take this number here times this number here and I write it over here. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Now what two numbers uh, when multiplied together give me negative 2 but when add together give me this positive 1 right here in the middle? Well that's obviously going to be a positive 2 and a negative 1. When you multiply those you get a negative 2. When you combine them you get a positive 1. So I bring down my first term 2x squared I bring down my last term, negative 1, and then right here in the middle, I don't bring this down. Instead, I bring down a positive 2x and a negative 1x. And of course, I got these two numbers, 2 and negative 1, from right over here. Now, we pull out, I guess I should bring down equal 0. Now, I pull out what's common in the first two, which is a 2 and an x. So if I pull out a 2 and an x, I'm left with x plus 1. Here's how I know that. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. Out of these two terms, I pull out a negative 1, okay? Now, when I pull out a negative sign, all of my signs will change, so I will have an x plus 1. Now, let's check that and see if it's right. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. So, I write my matching parentheses once. <coughs> And in the, then in the other parentheses, I write 2x minus 1. So 2x minus 1 equals 0. So there, I factor this. Now the only thing left to do is to go ahead and put my sign back in, okay? So I'm going to erase some of this so I have some room up here. And now I'm going to go ahead and write sine x plus 1. That's your first parentheses. And then this, for this parentheses, 2 sine, <coughs> two sine x minus 1 equals 0. Now I'm going to clear all this out. So there we go. I took this whole thing and I factored it down. Now if we take this group here and set it equal to 0, sine x plus 1 
equals zero, then bring the one over and make it negative, I'm left with sine x equals negative one. Over here I have two sine x minus one equals zero, bring the one over and make it positive, and then divide by two, and I'm left with sine x equals one half. So again, I'm gonna do some erasing. It's your job to take notes on this and to pause the video when you need to. I'm just trying to keep plenty of room on the screen. Plus, in a second, I'm gonna pull my chart up and I wanna have room for my chart here to pop up. Okay, let's start now with sine of an angle gives me negative one. Do you see negative one anywhere on your chart? No. So we're gonna have to use a calculator for this. We'll write that down in a second. Now, sine of an angle gives me one half. Well, here it is, sine of 30 gives me one half. So I know I want this to be 30 degrees, okay? So uh, the angle I'm gonna use for this, I'll kind of put it in parentheses here is 30 degrees. Over here for this, I'm gonna have to use a calculator. All right, let's come back over here. I want the two quadrants in which sine is positive because my one half is positive. Sine is positive here and sine is positive here. So a 30 here and a 30 here. I rotate up to the hypotenuse, that's one answer, 30 degrees. Then I rotate to the other hypotenuse. Notice I did not quite go all the way to 180. I stopped 30 degrees short. So the answer for my other quadrant, quadrant two, would be 150 degrees. So there's two answers. Now let's come over here. With your calculator, I want you to type in second sign and then negative one. And when you do that, you're gonna get out negative 90 degrees. Now let's think about what negative 90 is. I really, we're not supposed to use negative 90 because if you'll look at the directions for number 15, and please do this, look at the directions. The directions say that our answers have to fall between zero and 360. And ni negative 90 does not fall between zero and 360. So don't forget that negative 90 is like this. Negative 90 is like that. Okay, well, could we not just go this way instead? Sure we could. So the same thing as negative 90 is positive 270. Let me say that again. Your calculator said the answer was negative 90. So here's negative 90, you rotate down, okay? But another name for negative 90 would just be 270 degrees, 90, 180, 270. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and type in sine of 270. Take the sine of 270 and you will get negative one, okay? So what you're seeing now is the answer to this over here is what we call an axis angle. And remember, whenever you get out an axis angle, you gotta check all of them, okay? So we know that 270 is, I'm gonna write it down here. We know that one of our answers is 270 degrees. Let's also check 0, 90, 180, and we do not need to check 360 because 360 is not allowed to be one of our answers. So let's take the sine of 0, we do not get negative 1. Let's take the sine of 90, we do not get negative 1. Let's take the sine of 180, and we do not get negative 1. So here's our answers right here, 270, 30, and 150. All right, let's move on now to number 17. <coughs> Now this one here is interesting. Notice we only have two terms. In the last problem, you say we only had two terms too. Not really. We, we knew we had to bring this one over because you never want to factor unless it's a zero on the right side. So as soon as we brought that negative one over, we realized we had uh, three terms. And so if we go back to the other problem here, notice that um, we have two terms because we have no one to bring over. So I'm, read, I'm ready to go ahead and factor this. Now you always pull out what's common first. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out a cosine x. Now when I do that, I'm left with two cosine x minus square root of three. Now always check and make sure you're right. Cosine times two cosine x would be two cosine squared x and cosine times negative square root of three is negative square root of three x, okay? Or negative square root of three cosine x, excuse me. So now we take each group and we set each group equal to zero. Cosine of x equals zero. And then over here, two cosine x minus square root of three equals zero. Well, for this one here to the right, we know that we're gonna bring the square root of three over and make it positive and then divide by two. So we're gonna end up with square root of three over two. And here, of course, we have just cosine of x equals zero. So I've got to go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and erase some stuff here and get a little room. Bring all 
all of this up, get us a little room. All right, and let's go ahead and put our table up here. Let's see. When does cosine give me zero? It's just not on here, is it? When does cosine give me square root of 3 over 2? Right here. Cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2. Okay? So I know 30 is the angle I want to deal with for this equation here. And over here, I know I'm going to have to use my calculator. All right? Well, let's come over here. Notice I want a positive square root of 3 over 2. And cosine is positive here, and cosine is positive here. So I'm going to put a 30 here and a 30 here. We rotate up to here. One answer is 30 degrees. Then we rotate from here all the way to here. We didn't quite go to 360, okay? We stopped 30 degrees short. So the other answer would be 330 degrees, all right? Now let's come over here. Let's take our calculator, and let's hit second cosine because we're looking for an angle. So second cosine of 0, and we're going to get out 90. Now as soon as you get out 90, you realize you're dealing with an axis angle. So whenever that happens, we check all of them. So we're going to check 0, 90, 180, and 270. So let's take the cosine of 0. We do not get out 0. Let's take the cosine of 90. We do get out 0, so there's one answer, 90 degrees. Now let's take the cosine of 180. <coughs> we do not get out 0. Let's take the cosine of 270. We do get out 0, so there's another answer, 270. All right. So there's the answers for this equation right there, four answers, okay? And sometimes there'll be four answers, sometimes there'll be a little more, sometimes there'll be a little less, okay? That's number 17, moving on to number 19. Well, I notice right away I have cosine squared, cosine, a number here equals zero. It's like a, once again, it's going to be like a trinomial. I'm going to use x instead of this weird Greek symbol here, okay? I'm going to use x, but it's like having 6x squared plus 5x plus 1 equals 0. Now, maybe we can factor it. Maybe we can't. Okay, but let's find out. It's a trinomial with a lead coefficient of 6. So I'm going to take 6 times 1 and put that number way over here. 6 times 1 is 6. What two numbers, when multiplied together, give you 6? When added together, give you 5? Well, that would be a positive 3 and a positive 2. If you add those, you will get 6. If you, if you multiply those, you'll get 6. If you add those, you will get 5. So, I'm going to bring down my first term, 6x squared. I'm going to bring down my last term, positive 1. And I'm not going to bring down my middle term. Instead of putting 5x, I'm going to put 3x plus 2x. And I got those two numbers right here from these two numbers over here. Now, factor out what's common in your first two terms. Well, that would be a 3 and an x. And we should be left over with 2x plus 1. Let's see. 3x <coughs> times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times 1 is 3x. Now here there's nothing you can pull out at all. Nothing is common, so just pull out a 1. Whenever there's nothing common, just pull out a 1. If I pull out a 1, I'm left with 2x plus 1 because 1 times 2x is 2x and 1 times 1 is 1. Now notice your parentheses match, and they always should, or you've made a mistake somewhere. So you write your <coughs> matching parentheses once, and then in the other parentheses you would write 3x plus 1 equals 0. So we factor this. Now, now all that we have to do is go back up here and put the cosines back in. So now I would have 2 cosine x plus 1 for the first parentheses, and 3 cosine x plus 1 for the second parentheses, okay? And now let's go ahead and let's see what we can come up with. We take the first group here and we set it equal to 0. And then we solve, bring the 1 over and make it negative, divide by 2, and you will get cosine of x equals negative 1 half. Then over here, uh, same thing, we have 2 cos, or excuse me, 3 cosine x plus 1 equals 0. Bring the 1 over and make it negative, and then divide by 3. Cosine of x equals a negative 1 third. Okay? So there we go. Pretty cut and dry. Pretty simple. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull these up now. Let's pull our table up now and see what we have. Uh, cosine does give me 1 half. The cosine of 60 gives me 1 half. So I know I'm going to use 60 degrees for this equation here. Notice there's no one-third right here, so we're going to have to use a calculator for this equation, okay? So let's go ahead and remind ourselves, let's put a 60 right here in parentheses. 
Let's put a calculator right over here in parentheses, and let's go ahead and do this. First of all, cosine, notice I have a negative 1 half, and cosine is negative here, and cosine is negative here. I'm going to put a 60 and a 60. So I do not go all the way to 180 like this. I stop 60 degrees short, so that means I have 120 for one answer. And then I rotate all the way to 180 plus 60 more, and I stop at the hypotenuse. 180 plus 60 is 240 degrees. So there's two answers. Now let's come over here. We're going to have to use our calculator, so let's type into our calculator second cosine of, and don't use negative one-third. I know it says negative one-third. I want to encourage you not to do that. Just type in second cosine of one-third, and it kind of gives us a reference angle. I'm getting 70.528, so I'm going to use 71 degrees. Now, now I worry about the negative sign. Now I say to myself, where is cosine negative? Well, it's negative right here, and it's negative right here. And then I put 71 degrees in this triangle and 71 degrees in that triangle. Now I rotate from here to the hypotenuse. I did not quite <coughs> go all the way to 180. I stopped 71 degrees short, okay? Uh, so 180, 110, 109. So I would have 109 for one answer. And then I go from here all the way 180 plus 71 more degrees to get to the hypotenuse. And that should be, if I've done my math correctly, 251 degrees. Okay? 251 degrees. Let's see if that's right. 180, uh, yes, that's right. 251 degrees. So there we go. Um, two answers here um, for this equation, two for this equation. So those are your final answers. Let's go ahead and take a look now at number 21. <coughs> <coughs> now on number 21 now we're finally getting into some more difficult problems okay um, I want you to notice <coughs> sorry students excuse me <coughs> a lot of students would say oh I got a sign here and a sign here so I'm going to factor out a sign I'm going to put sign X and I'm left with cosine x minus 1. That is a great idea. That is a great idea. The only problem with that is you, if you tried to do that, you didn't realize something. And here's what you didn't realize. <coughs> we have a cosine of 2x here and a cosine of x here. They're not the same. You cannot pull them out. Here you're taking the cosine of one angle. Here, here, you're, ta or here you're taking the sine of one angle. And here you're taking the sine <coughs> of another angle. So... First of all, I'm going to have to make a substitution for sine double angle, sine 2x. Now, the, the substitution I'm going to make is going to be this. I'm going to put 2 sine x cosine x. 2 sine x cosine x, okay? And then I'm going to bring down my cosine x right here, all right? Now, You'll find this trig identity that I used in your double angle identities, and then bring down your negative sine x. Now, Mr. Earhart, why did you do that? I'll tell you why I did that. Now all of my angles are x, 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 and x. I no longer have a 2x, and that's really helpful. Now, notice there's not a plus sign here, so you're not going to take cosine times 2 sine x and cosine times cosine, okay? This is all one term times one term. So 2 sine x cosine x times cosine x would be 2 sine x cosine squared x minus sine x. And now look what you're ready to do, guys. Now you're ready to factor. They both have a sine x. So let's pull out a sine x. And when you do, you're left over with 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Now let's make sure that's right. Let's check our work. Sine times 2 cosine squared is 2 sine cosine squared. And sine times negative 1 is negative sine x. So we have factored it perfectly. We're doing great. So now I take my one group here, and I set it equal to 0. And I take my other group, 2 cosine... <coughs> Two cosine squared x min minus one equals zero, and this one's already isolated here. Sine is already isolated over here. I would have to write cosine squared x equals bring your negative one over and make it positive, then divide by two, and you get one half. And now take the square root of both sides. The square root of cosine squared is cosine, 
and the square root of one half would be positive, negative. Well, the square root of one is just one, but the square root of two is the square root of two. So now I've got to rationalize that. So let's come up here and let's go ahead and get a little room so we can write everything up here. So here I have sine x, sine of x equals zero. And then for this, I would have cosine of x equals plus minus square root of 2 over 2. Instead of 1 over square root of 2, I'm going to write square root of 2 over 2. All right, so let's go ahead and cross that off. There we go. And now let's bring up our table. <coughs> and let's see, is there anywhere in the table that sine gives you 0 using your special angles? No. So we know we're going to have to use the calculator for this. How about cosine for square root of 2 over 2? Well, let's take a look and see. Uh, cosine square root of 2 over 2, the cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. So I know my angle is going to be 45 degrees. So I'm going to come over here and write off to the side 45 degrees. I know that's the angle I'm going to use. And over here I'm going to write calculator because I have to use my calculator. All right. So let's start over here. Let's hit second sine and then 0. And we do get out and we do get out zero degrees. So we know the sine of zero is zero. We know that. <coughs> and we know that's an axis angle, okay? So right away, I'm gonna check all of my axis angles, zero, 90, 180, and 270. So we know the sine of zero is zero. That's one answer. Let's try the sine of 90. Sine of 90 gives you out one. The sine of 180 gives you out zero. So there's another answer. 180. If I can get this pen to work okay, 180. And then the sine of 270 gives you out negative 1. So these are the two answers that you need. Now let's come over here. Notice we have a positive and a negative square root of 2 over 2. So we're actually going to use here all four quadrants. All right, so we're going to use all four quadrants. So let's put a 45 in each triangle. And we'll rotate up. So one answer is 45 degrees. And then we'll go from here to here. That's 180 minus 45. That's 135 degrees. Then we'll rotate from here to the hypotenuse. That's 180 plus 45. That's 225 degrees. And then we'll rotate from here all the way to the hypotenuse here. That's 45 degrees short of going all the way to 360. So that's 315 degrees. Now, students, listen to me very carefully. I went over this with you in your notes yesterday. Whenever the original problem has more than one trig function, like this problem here has more than one trig function, the original equation has a sine and a cosine, that's one of those situations where you definitely want to check the answers. So everywhere there's an x, you put a 0 and see if you get a true statement. Everywhere there's an x, you put 180 with your calculator, of course. And same thing here, use your calculator, okay? And if you'll do this whole thing and type this whole thing, and for example, I'm going to show you real quick, using 45 degrees, okay? I would type this into my calculator. I would hit sign, all right? And then the parentheses pops up. I would write 2 times 45, and then close the parentheses. The next is cosine, so type cosine, and up pops the parentheses, type in 45 degrees, then hit minus, then hit sine, and up pops the parentheses, type in 45 degrees, and then hit enter. And if you do that, you will get zero, and that's what you're supposed to get. Zero equals zero. And so you have to check each one. I know it's annoying, and during homework time like this, I can pretty much just do it for you and just tell you um, so you don't have to take time and do that. In this case, all of these answers do work, every single one. So these are your six answers, okay? All right, let's go on to number 23. Now, students, on number 23, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, you're thinking x squared plus 6x plus 4. And you're going to try to factor this. Unfortunately, this cannot be factored. So whenever you're dealing with a quadratic trig equation that cannot be factored, we are going to have to use the quadratic formula. So here, a equals 1 because there's a 1 right here. b equals 6 because of the 6. 
and C equals 4. Now the quadratic formula is negative B plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Now for B I'm going to put a 6, so I have negative 6 <coughs> plus minus the square root of B squared, that would be 36, 6 times 6, and then minus 4AC, that's minus 4 times 1 for A times 4 for C, and that's going to be a negative 16 all over 2A. Well, A is 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. So then I would end up with negative 6 plus minus the square root of 20 all over 2. Now where I got 20 from was 36 minus 16, okay? Now, I need to get this in decimal form, so I'm going to go ahead and type into my calculator. I'll make sure you type this in correctly, students. Okay, it's negative 6 plus the square root of 20 equals divided by 2 equals. So you'll get out negative 0.763 negative 0.7639. Now let's take negative 6 minus the square root of 20, hit enter, and then divide it by 2, enter, and you'll get negative 5.2361. Now we did the quadratic to get those two numbers, and now here's what we do, and hopefully you remember this from your notes. That's not your, <coughs> those are not at all your final answers. What you do now is you simply say cosine of x equals negative 0.7639 and cosine of x equals negative 5.2361. Now, we can pull the chart up, but we know that none of these numbers uh, here are going to be on the chart, so there's no need to do that. We know we're going to use the calculator here and the calculator here. Now, I want to encourage you men to not type in, uh, you students, excuse me, I want to I encourage you students to not type the negative sign in, okay? I want you to hit second cosine and then type in 0.7639. And if you do that, you get 40 degrees, rounded, of course, 40 degrees. Now, that's not an answer. That's my reference angle I'm going to use. Now, I come over here. I'm going to hit second cosine. And don't type the negative, type 5.2361. We'll worry about the negative sign later. Just like over here, we'll worry about the negative sign later. All right? And let's see what we have here. Okay, this should give you no solution or undefined. Okay, so there is no solutions to this right here. So don't worry about that one. So now notice my sub point 0.7639 is negative, And cosine is going to be negative here and cosine is going to be negative here. So I'm going to put 40 degrees here and 40 degrees here. So we go from here to here. We stop there. That's 40 degrees short of 180. That would be 140 degrees. And then we rotate 180 plus 40 more, and that's going to be 220 degrees. And there are your two answers. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Okay, let's go ahead and give number 20, 25 a shot. You're going to find the exact same thing here, students. You're going to see that when you bring the 7 over and make it negative, cotangent squared x plus 4 cotangent x minus 7, you cannot factor this. You cannot factor it, so once again, we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So a equals 1, b equals 4, c equals negative 7. Now the quadratic formula, of course, is negative b, so that's negative 4 and then plus minus the square root of b squared. Well, b is 4, so b squared is 16. And then minus 4ac, minus 4ac, minus 4 times 1 times negative 7, that's a positive 28, all over 2a. 2 times 1 is 2. Well, next I would have negative 4 plus minus the square root of 44, all over 2. And now let's use our calculator and let's get out two decimal numbers, okay? So first of all, I'm going to type in negative 4 plus the square root of 44 equals and then divided by 2 equals. And I'm going to get 1.3166. Then I'm going to type negative 4 minus the square root of 44. So negative 4 minus the square root of 44, enter, divided by 2, enter. 
and I'm going to get negative 5.3166. That's a negative sign here. Negative 5.3166. So there's my two numbers. And now let's clear us off some space. And again, we can pull our chart up if you guys want to, but to be honest with you, uh, we know there's no need to do that. Nowhere will these numbers be on our chart. So I'm dealing with cotangent. So cotangent of x equals 1.3166. And cotangent of x equals negative 5.3166. So there we go. Now, this is going to be a little difficult. We're going to have to use our calculator. There's no cotangent button. So remember what I've taught you to do? You can flip cotangent. And when you flip cotangent, that's really like writing tangent. But if I flip one side, remember this is really over 1 right here. If I flip one side, I've got to flip the other side. So it's 1 over 1.3166. All that I did, students, is I flipped one side and I flipped the other side. That's all that I did. And that's good because now I can use my calculator. All right. So with my calculator, I'm going to go ahead and hit second tangent and then type this fraction in 1 divided by 1.3166 and hit enter and I'm going to get 37.2 so I'm going to go ahead and put 37 degrees off to the side okay now notice this fraction is positive so I'm dealing with where tangent is positive tangent is positive here and tangent is positive here so I'm going to put a 37 degrees here and a 37 degrees here I rotate up there's one answer 37 degrees and then I rotate to 180 plus 37 more okay Let's see, 180 plus 30 is 210 plus 7, 217. So I would get 217 degrees. So there's two answers. Now let's come over here and apply the same thing. I have no second cotangent button on my calculator. So I flip this side. And if I flip cotangent, I get tangent. But if you flip one side, you must flip the other side. So it would be negative. Of course, this is over 1. So when you flip it, you get negative 1 over 5.3166. So go ahead and hit second tangent with your calculator and then negative 1 divided by 5.3166. All right, and then go ahead and hit enter and you will get negative 10 degrees. Actually, I, I just kind of contradicted myself and I apologize to you. Would you type this in again? I'm sorry about that. I've told you to never worry about that negative sign and you're not supposed to until the end when you decide what quadrant to use. So let's do that again. Hit second tangent and then use positive 1 divided by 5.3166. And if you do that, you'll get 10.65. So I'm going to put 11 degrees off to the side here. Now we worry about this negative sign right here when we write our quadrant. So tangent is negative um, <coughs> here and tangent is negative here. I'm going to put 11 degrees here and 11 degrees here. Okay, I rotate to here. I stop 11 degrees short of 180. So that's going to be 169 degrees. And then I rotate all the way to here and I stop 11 degrees short of 360. So that's going to be 349 degrees. And in our original problem, there is cotangents only, no other trig functions. So there's no need to check the answers. Okay? So very good job. I'm going to do something I've done before, students. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video now and give my voice a break. I've done half the problem. So um, we're going to call this video here Pre-Cal um, October 31st Homework Part 1. And then, all, th and then go ahead and look for the other video. It's going to say uh, Pre-Cal October 31st Homework Part 2. And of course, they'll both be listed there. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this. So this is going to be part one. That's nine problems. The next nine problems will be on the next video. And that's all you have for today on the 31st is just homework.